Well, hey there, team. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Bitburner. We're revisiting this today because, well, you know, we are going back to some of Scarlet's greatest hits, the things that our community seems to really enjoy. Give the people what they want, as it were. Now, we looked at this when it came out probably a year ago. Um, it is free to play, so you can go and get it yourself. Um, it is a, a window-based idler at its core, so that's why the I'll do some editing in post, uh, so the perspective might be a little bit off. Um, and uh, as far as uh, the, the deafening silence, you're stuck here with me and my dulcet tones because there's no like background music or anything like that. So you can put on your own Spotify and, and listen to bloody Britney or something like that while I while I play this game. Um, so this is actually a really complex game. Uh, I've heard people compare it to uh, Java. Most of it is Java based from what I gather. Uh, I, I have a coding background, I suppose. Um, but mine is more well, engineering disciplines and, and other, other languages, right? Um, low code and such. Uh, I've never really written in Java, but I managed to figure out this game. So, you know, if you, if you understand a little bit of code, you should be all right with this. Um, it is essentially a hacking game, as I recall. And uh, a lot of your incentive is to write scripts to, to manage the idle component of the game, right? It's kind of cool, right? Um, uh, if you're not into code, I doubt this is going to change your mind, but if you're interested, maybe you don't know anything about code. This actually is a pretty good place to start. I'll also, while it comes to mind, I'll mention Rabbids Coding. I still remember this to this day. And that's aimed at younger blokes. It's an Ubisoft thing. It's free. You should also check that out if you have any interest in learning code and maybe you don't know anything about it and you're a little bit standoffish. Anyway, so that's the setup. Let's see how we go, uh, because I don't remember anything. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a lump of wood as well. So we'll see. If I can figure it out, you bloody well can. Um, welcome to Bitburner, a cyberpunk-themed incremental RPG. The game takes place in a dark, dystopian future. The year is 2077. Well, how about that? How about that indeed? This tutorial will show you the basics of the game. You may skip the tutorial at any time. No! You can also collapse this panel to temporarily hide this tutorial. Let's press this arrow. Let's start by heading to the stats page. Right, on the main bloody screen. It likes saving, doesn't it? Stats show a lot of important information about your progress, such as your skills, money, and bonuses. Okay, hacking chance, 100%. That's, I like those odds. Um, uh, let's head to your computer's terminal by clicking terminal. Right, so we've got stats that don't make any sense yet. We've got a terminal. Terminal is used to interface with your home computer as well as all other machines around the world. Um, this is cool. Now, this is actually a little bit more hands-on. It's a little less Hollywood hacking, though it still kind of is. Hacknet is a bit more of a Hollywood hacker game, which is much more popular. Um, probably have to pay for it. But yeah, if I'm just listing off recommendations and that, Hacknet's pretty cool as well. Um, all right, let's try it out. Let's start by uh, entering home help. Don't forget to press enter. All right, well, I'll just type help. Us. Oh, 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 okay. Displays a list of all available terminal commands, how to use them, and a description of what they do. Let's try another command. Uh, ls. Okay. What's ls say in here? ls dir. Uh, so display all files on a machine. All right, so it's a directory finder. ls nuke.exe. Uh, Alice is a basic command that shows files on the computer. Right now, it shows that you have a program called nuke.exe on your computer. We'll get to this, what this does later. Using your home computer's terminal, you can connect to other machines throughout the world. Um, throughout the, oh, sorry, I, I lost my place. Throughout the world. Let's do that now by first entering scan. Okay, scan. Okay, we've got a bunch of IP addresses and different hosts that we can see. Um, home, scan, scan shows all available network connections. In other words, it displays a list of all servers that can be connected to from your current machine. Uh, that's probably worth noting as well. We're in our home machine, but I believe if we node out and connect into, say, noodles there or something, that in turn will have its own web connected onto it that you could connect out uh, on the sides. I'm also being told that apparently Hacknet is on sale or the Steam sale. It's going for $1.50 US. Oh, might have to chuck that in a comment for me, team, if you're watching this on YouTube. Might have to um, cover Hacknet on the channel as well. 
if this is well received. It's probably worth mentioning as well. Let me know if you find this interesting, if you like this, if you want to want more episodes. We'll turn it into a full playthrough. We'll do 200 episodes. I don't mind. Um, also, in the new year, we're recording these episodes um, on Twitch. Uh, all the links will be in the description. You should come along. Check it out. Uh, join the Discord. You know, join the rest of the community and because I post there when I go live. So I'll be streaming pretty much every day, uh, recording all these little episodes. Anyway, there's my plug. Um, that's great and all. Uh, but there's so many servers. Which one should you go to? Scan, analyze. Gives more detailed information about the servers on the network. Try it now. Are you, is that just scan, tack, analyze? Is, is that what it's telling me there? Scan, tack, analyze with a Z. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Food and stuff, noodles, root access, no required hacking skill, one. So there's an RPG layer to it. Obviously, you don't. You don't need a hacking skill in real life to support scan and all this sort of shit. But, you know, this is sort of sort of close. I did a very rudimentary bit of training of this back in my service days. Um, you know, it's not as sexy as Hollywood would let you know, but you know, this is sort of in the same ballpark. Um, shows more detailed information and the servers you can connect to. Servers that are a distance of one node away, okay? It is also possible to run scan analyze with a higher depth. Let's try a depth of two with the following command, scan analyze two. Now I'm assuming if I press up arrow, I can cycle back to my last type command and we can just go space two. There you go. So it does have some, you know, coding shorthand. If you ever fucked around with, you know, CD dot dot bloody DOS prompts and all that sort of stuff, right? Um, okay, cool. Now you can see the information about all servers that are up to two nodes away. You can see we've got a whole bunch of stuff. Joe's guns, Hong Fang T, Max hardware as well as figure out how to navigate to those servers through the network. Oh. Root access, no. Required hacking skills. 100 for Iron Jim. Oh, my goodness. You can only connect to a server that is one node away. To connect to a machine, use connect host name from the results of Scan Analyze 2. We can see that Noodles server is only one node away. Let's connect to it using that now. Now, we can't see Noodles. Can we, like, scroll up? Oh, we can. Okay. So you can see... Number of open ports required to nuke. Root access, no required hacking skill. Okay, sure. But let's just follow the bouncing ball, right? Connect noodles with some O's. Uh, connect noodles, right? Connect noodles connected to noodles. So that's pretty straightforward. You're now connected to another machine. What can you do now? You can hack it. In the year 2077, currency has become digital and decentralized. Oh, okay. People and corporations store their money on servers and computers. Using your hacking abilities, you can hack servers to steal money and gain experience. Before you try to hack a server, you should run diagnostics using analyze with the root noodles, which we're already in. You can see that in our prompt. So we just go analyze. Now, look, like I said, I'm not a computer super whiz, though. I mean, as I say that, I've, I've written code for government projects. <laughs> so, but, but I would still argue that I'm a very junior in the scheme of things. And I would hope that there's value, right? I'm not out here trying to sniff my own farts and tell you that I'm the best fucking speed hacker, black hat wanker out there or anything. I'm just a dude that has a rudimentary background and interest in, 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 uh, in uh, not hacking, but in coding. And maybe, you know, coming from my base level, this might be a bit more accessible. I'd be curious to hear what people have to say, all right? If you're looking for high tier bloody flex, well, actually sweat stuff, you're not going to get it from me. Um, okay, cool. When? Noodles finishes running. It'll show you some useful information. We can see that there. Analyzing systems, noodle bar. We've got RAM, backdoor, required hacking, time to hack. We've got some port stats as well. That's kind of cool. For this server, the required hacking skill is only one, which means you can hack it right now. However, in order to hack a server, you must first gain root access. Okay, sure. The nuke.exe program that we saw earlier on your home computer is a virus that will grant you root access to a machine if there are enough open ports, right? Analyze shows that you do not need to, there do not need to be any open ports on this machine for the nuke virus to work. We did actually read that earlier. We should be able to just scroll back up to it just so, you know, because I can, this can be really overwhelming if you've never seen anything like this before. You can see root access, no, at the time. Number of open ports required to nuke, zero. That's what it's referring to there. Don't need to open any ports, right? Um, 
that will grant you root access, shows that you analyze. Yep, yep. So go ahead and run the virus, right? So we're just going to go run nuke bloody not comma dot exe boots. Okay. Nuke successful, gained root access to noodles. You can now run scripts on this server. Uh, you now have root access. You can hack the server using noodles hack. Try doing that now. Hack. Hacking. So we've got a little bloody visual representation. You're now attempting to hack the server. Performing a hack takes time and only has a certain percentage chance of success. So very, like, I, like we said before, RPG game mechanics worked in. It's pretty cool. It makes it more of a game and less of a job, right? Um, the, the time to success chance is determined by a variety of factors, including your hacking skill and the server's security level. If you attempt to hack a server, if, you, uh, if your attempt to hack the server is successful, you will steal a certain percentage of the server's total money. This percentage is affected by your hacking skill and the server's security level. The amount of money on a server is not limitless. So if you constantly hack a server and deplete its money, then you'll encounter diminishing returns in your hacking. You will need to use Grow, which tricks the company into adding money to their server, and Weaken, which increases the speed of hack and grow. Oh, so if you're starting to think about this, you could probably run scripts to do this remotely, right? You could have it constantly charging up the accounts with grow and weaken to try and make the grow rate go higher and then obviously hack and create some sort of passive income. I believe that's you know what, what you should be thinking about now. Hack successful on noodles, gain $288 and 3.3 .3 hacking experience. Security increased on noodles from 1 to 1.002. All right. Um, do we just click here? From any server, you can get back home using noodles home. What we could do is let's just type grow. Bad command. Please follow the tutorial. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Apologies. Home. And you can see that now we're back to home prompt. We're no longer on the noodles prompt. So we're in the home machine. Hacking is the core mechanic of the game and is necessary for pro progressing. However, you don't want to be hacking manually the entire time. You can automate your hacking by writing scripts. And that's the sort of big draw for this game. To create a new script or edit an existing one, you can use nano from a home prompt. Screen, uh, scripts must end with the .js extension. Let's make a script now by entering nano noodles.js. After the hack command finishes running, side note, press, pressing control C will end a command like hack early. Okay. So, okay, as I understand, what, that's got nothing to do with noodles explicitly. What that is, is we're creating a file, a nano file called noodles.js on the home com computer, right? Now, look, if this is all suck eggs, I apologize, but it also helps me as I, because this can get overwhelming really quick. So I'm talking a lot of this stuff out loud for my advantage as well. All right, nano noodles.js. Here we go. Right, we're in a script creation screen. This should look familiar uh, if, you've, if you've ever played in this sort of space. This is the script editor. You can use it to program your scripts. Copy and paste the following code into the script editor. Okay, export async function main ns. I'm not really sure what that means, um, but we can see we've got our brackets opening. While true, await ns.hack noodles. Um, okay, for anyone with basic programming uh, experience, this code should be straightforward. The script will continuously hack the noodles server. Yeah, while true, um, await, like I get that ns.hack noodles. Yep, okay, I get parts of it, I do. Copied, oh, I just select it and it copies. Okay, and then, oh right, hang on, it's already got export async, whatever, whatever the, export async function main ns. Right, so all we actually need to do is copy this. And then if I were to, can I just control V straight in? Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can mop this up. 
while true. I think we seem to have an extra bracket. That should work. To save and close the script editor, press the button at the bottom left or press control S. Where's the button at the control at the bottom left? Bottom left. Script editor. That might be what they're talking about. Let's just press control S, right? Looks like it worked. Okay. Now we'll run the script. Scripts require a certain amount of RAM to run and can be run on any machine which you have root access to. Different servers have different amounts of RAM. You can also purchase more RAM for your home server. Okay. To check how much RAM is available on the machine, go free. Free. You can see we've got eight gigs of RAM. It's gonna be more like an inventory space, that sort of thing, right? We have eight gigs of RAM on the machine, which is enough to run our script. Let's run our script using home run noodles.js. Okay. Is that gonna work? I kind of thought it would have to run locally. That's okay. I meant lo local to noodles, but my bad. Your script is now running. It will continually run in the background and will automatically stop if the code ever completes. The noodles.js will never complete because it runs an infinite loop. Yes, it has a, a constant loop at true condition, right? These scripts can passively earn you income and hacking experience. Your scripts will also earn money and experience while you're offline, although at a slightly slower rate. Fair enough, it is an idle game. Um, let's see the cash rolling in. Yeah, exactly. Let's check out some statistics for our running scripts by clicking active scripts. You can see down there, we're running down there. Active scripts. This page displays, inf can I move this tutorial around? Oh, that's handy. This page displays information about all your scripts that are running across every server. You can use this to gauge how well your scripts are doing. All right, and we can see here that we've got this one. Is that it? It's progress. Has that moved in the background while I was talking? Total production since last augment. Oh, there you go. 0 0.270 per second. So it's, you can see the rate that it's earning is degrading. And this is because, because why? Remember, we can empty out the account. The security increases. Um, I mean, we're not triggering it to grow. So I, presumably the script will not stop, but it will stop earning if noodles runs out of money right um anyway we'll go back to terminal one last thing about scripts each active script contains logs that detail what it's doing we can check these logs in the tail command right so we're going to run a tail against noodles tail noodles dot js right here we go executing hack T1, successful hack noodles, 200 bucks and experience, right? Executing noodles in 49 seconds. I'm not quite sure what the T1 means. I, can't, I assume it was a time thing, but it seems that time is moving here. Failed to hack noodles. Remember, it, and it potentially get to a point where it, it, the hacks will just fail because it will outweigh my hacking skill versus the security, I'm presuming, right? Anyway, we should be able to close that. Uh, this covers the basics of hacking. To learn more about writing scripts, press tutorial in the main navigation. For now, let's move on to something else. Okay, well, we've got some more we can come back to a little bit more. Hacking is not the only way to earn money. One other way to passively earn money is by purchasing up and upgrading HackNet nodes. Let's go on to HackNet through the navigation screen now. Well, there we go. What's this? Here you can purchase new HackNet nodes and upgrade your existing ones. Let's purchase a new one now. Okay, you're starting to throw me. Does node mean something different to what I understood it to be? The HackNet is a global decentralized network of machines. Right, so we're sort of renting a server in a way, right? I think that's how it works, or buying a remote node. It is used by hackers all around the world, world to or anonymously share computing power and perform distributed cyber attacks without the fear of being traced. Here you can purchase a HackNet node, a specialized machine that can connect and contribute its resources to the HackNet network. Oh, okay. It's like having a remote bloody crypto, a <laughs> uh, 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 Bitcoin miner, sorry. The, this allows you to take a small percentage of profits from hacks performed on the network. 
Essentially, you are renting out your node's computing power. That's exactly what this is then. This is a coin farming set up. Uh, each hacknet node you purchase will passively earn you money. Each hacknet node can be upgraded in order to increase its computing power and thereby increase profit. So this is just an idle mechanic. This isn't even necessarily part of the hacking and scripting. Um, purchase a hacknet node for a thousand bucks. I mean, will, it, will the tutorial let me? There you go. Total hacknet node production, $1.50 per second. So it's just a passive income that you see in most idlers, right? You just purchase a hacknet node. The hacknet node will passively earn your money over time, both online and offline. When you get enough money, you can upgrade your newly purchased node below. Let's go to city. And when it says below, it means here. So we can upgrade the node or we could buy another node, all right? $520 to upgrade it, probably more viable than 1.8 thousand, 1800. Now we'll go to the city. We've got an actual sort of visualization of things. This page lists all the different locations you can currently travel to. Each location is something that you can do. There's a lot of content out in the world. Let's make sure, make sure you explore and discover. Lastly, click on tutorial. We can just see here, there's the powerhouse gym. Is home listed? It must be CIA. Oh my goodness. Alpha dot ent. Iron gym. Oh, the iron gym is different from powerhouse gym. Can we see, where's Noodles? Can we see Noodles? Hmm. Okay. That's fine. We'll figure it out. Okay. It's part of the game, but not the scripting. Yeah, exactly. The more idle component. Um, this page contains a lot of different documentation about the game's content mechanics. I know it's a lot. But I highly suggest you read or at least skim through this before you start playing. Getting started contains guides for new players, navigating you through most of the early game. Well, that's nice. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoy the game, right? Now, given the nature of it, and I like to think that I'm not a terrible companion holding hands through it, and I'm not an expert either. This is all kind of new to me, right? Um, oh, here we go. We get a little overview. We've got charisma and agility. We've got the traditional stats. That's cool. I don't see the issue with maybe following through a bit more of these tutorials. It's a bit tough to tell on a first episode. This might be the only episode we ever do, right? It does stand as an overview to let you know what the game is and if you're interested and if it's worth your time. Um, chuck a comment if you want more, of course. Um, we'll keep going a bit more, but perhaps uh, I, th I think for the moment we'll just sort of follow these set tutorials, or maybe we won't actually, because what that's done has tabbed me out. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, well, we are capturing this in a sort of dis capture, a display capture sort of setup, actually. So what we may do is, let's just fidget with this for a little bit more to, to round out the sort of episode. And then potentially we can show the getting started, like maybe we can drag the getting started window over in, in subsequent episodes as we go, right? Um, anyway, so let's go, let's go back to terminal, right? Now, I'm curious because we're running that script in the background and you can see free used. So it uses quite a bit of our, our RAM base to cover that, right? Um, script editor, active scripts. What we could probably do is set up more scripts against more nodes, right? Now, what was it? It's LS is the do, right? No, 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 no. It was, it was help. Help was the list of commands. Actually, let me just see if I can go off memory. I think scan just scans all the nearby nodes, right? And it was scan analyze, right? Scan and uh, can I auto complete that at all? Maybe like scan and if I press tab or something? No, okay. Sometimes they, there are some quality of life shortcuts in these things. Scan analyze is probably enough. Ooh, okay, no, there's attack in it. Apologies. I'll get used to this. Okay, cool. So we've got noodles. We have root access to noodles already. Um, what else we got here? Food and stuff. Root required, number of open ports. Sure. Um, okay, so what if we go... 
Let's just go through here. Connect noodles. Connect noodles is what we did. Let's go connect food and stuff. Right? Connected to food and stuff. Um, we should be able to scan it, right? Root access, yes. Um, I think we just go run nuke. It was called nuke, wasn't it? Nuke.exe. Nuke successful. We've got root access. We can now run scripts. Cool. So what we could probably do is go um, home, right? Home. Cool. We've developed root access. We've got active scripts, script editor. Now what we might do is how do we go and here we go. We got, there we go. We got noodles. Can I just go control all control copy? And then if I go, uh, how would I make a new script? I make a new script through the terminal prompt, right? That was, let's find run noodle JS nano. That's what it was. Probably makes the most sense to do the same thing. We'll just call it food, food and stuffs. Is that what it was called? Food and stuff dot JS. So this will create the JS file. We'll paste that in there. We'll change out the origin to food and stuff. Uh, control S, return to terminal. Uh, we'll go, uh, was it just run? We'll just run noodles.js and we'll just go run food and stuff.js. Running one script, cool. We go to the active scripts and we should see that we have at home, there we go. We're running two scripts. Wonderful, isn't it? Look at this. So noodles is earning us $3.70 a second, thereabouts. This will start earning us online time, 26 seconds. If we were to run a tail against it, you'd see that it's only initiated at start hack, right? So we'll go tail. Uh, food and stuff dot js, right? There you go. Executing hack in 49 seconds. Oh, look at that. Perfect timing, right? Successful hack, seven and a half thousand dollars. Holy heck. And if we go back to active scripts, that should be updated in there for its sort of, it's earning their online production rate. And that's obviously ticking because it's only hitting the hack every 50 seconds. Every second that goes past changes your, your floating average, right? Cool. Pretty happy with that. Okay, I think this is a pretty good place to sort of maybe just pause. This is probably what I did last time I looked at it. Um, happy to come back to this. Um, make sure you let me know if you want to see some more. Uh, we'll do some more episodes. Um, and of course, check the check all my links in the description. Come across the Discord. Check out the uh, Twitch because you could probably catch me recording this live, actually, and um, help me out, ask questions, that sort of thing. Anyway, I think we'll um, we'll finish up there, and hopefully, uh, well, you'll let me know if you want to see some more. Anyway, cheers.